10 away from 8 o'clock if you're watching the time. Good to have you with us here on this African morning. So we're looking at the uh, declining state of our water systems. We were yesterday, we will again uh, today. Infrastructure, always a big issue. That's not even to talk about the water quality, things like uh, cholera and E. coli and all of that. But UCT water expert, Dr. Kevin Winter, uh, joining me now to talk about some ideas around improving uh, water quality. Dr. Winter, good morning to you, and I appreciate uh, your time. We can chat if we've got a moment about your thoughts on the infrastructure. Uh, but before we get to that, when we talk about cheap and green ideas to improve water quality, what do you mean by that? Good morning. Yes, good morning to you. The work that we do in at an innovation center actually called the Water Hub, uh, it began by taking nature-based solutions as the principled approach to how we treat water which is running off an informal settlement. Informal settlements, as we all know, are places which are underserviced, and so a lot of the sanitation systems are in a poor state. There's open defecation occurring in these settlements as well, and they're very dense settlements. And as a result, a lot of the runoff comes off that settlement and goes either into the groundwater or into surface water. And so what we've been doing is working on an old abandoned uh, wastewater treatment plant and turning it into a recovery center. And so we take some of the infrastructure that's on that site and turn that into a nature-based process. In other words, we are understanding more about how nature operates, working mm. with nature, learning how to process water through natural material, uh, such as stones and, and uh, carbon sources. Um, we're using biochar, for instance, to clean that water. And we treat about, you know, on a smallish scale, about 100,000 liters of water every five to seven days and use that water, not for drinking purposes. So it's very important to make that clear, that this is water that we use in that is fit for another purpose and it's safe to use for other purposes, such as irrigating uh, vegetables to support food security and to understand a bit more about what happens when you use that water on a soil over a long term. Hmm. So it's nature-based solutions. And I think probably from our research side, we often say we're surprised by nature when we work with nature, uh, just how much it does actually clean water um, with relatively low infrastructure in, in invested in the uh, capital of the actual working arrangements and very little maintenance required as well yeah. uh, when we work with nature and it's understanding that that's an important part of it. It is, because the answer is always in nature. Anyone, any environmentalist I've ever spoken to over the years will say, if you need the solution, go back to the basics. Uh, it, the answer is in nature. So when you're talking about how you're doing this, for example, the, the filtration systems, the stones, I think you may have used uh, charcoal filtration. I may have misheard that slightly as well. What I like to hear about this uh, with the infrastructure problems is none of this requires electricity, really. The blackouts won't be such a problem. We know up in Hammanskral, the blackouts there uh, causing issues with the treatment plant, then the purification plant, and so on uh, and so forth. How scalable in your mind and in your ideal situation, doctor, how scalable could this be, do you think? Yes, I think absolutely scalable, and that's the very intention of why we're working at what we call field scale, uh, so that it can be logically upscaled and transferred to other parts uh, of the country and to increase the volume of water as well. And as you say, we do all of our pumping and distribution of water through gravity, first of all, uh, most of, at most as our first option, and then use uh, renewable energy from solar uh, power that uh, supports our pumping and so on. But for the most part, uh, trying to use uh, nature as the resource and to manage it accordingly. I think it's perfectly scalable. Uh, every site is different, and so it has to be rethought through as to how the configuration occurs. But essentially, that is the, the recipe from us from our side. And I was about to ask as well, so this, this recipe, as you call it, uh, is government involved in this? Are they taking an interest in the work? Are you talking to them? And if you are, where do they see the application for this? I imagine on a slightly smaller scale at very troublesome areas, for example, informal settlements. What's the rollout for something like this, do you think, Doctor? It could be my last question to you. 
Well, I think uh, certainly I've got a lot of support from the Western Cape government, from the Department of Environmental Affairs uh, there, um, to some extent from municipalities, and we're starting to engage with many municipalities and also private uh, entrepreneurs who bring in their business interests uh, onto the site as well, and extending and expanding the work that we're doing. Uh, because once you've got water, it's the catalyst for a whole lot of other things. And certainly government's very interested in this. And I've also had uh, people from from the mm. National Department visiting the site and talking it through as well. It takes a bit of courage and a bit of risk it's because it's not the kind of conventional way in which we're doing things. But I think if we're going to look for an answer to a lot of our water issues, particularly pollution, we're going to have to look more at decentralizing our activity and finding responsible institutions who are able to manage that at a decentralized level. So localize, I think, is is really what we're trying to achieve uh, in our many different parts across our cities uh, that are expanding rapidly and needing this kind of attention at, at, without a lot of capital involvement. Mm. Uh, thank goodness there are clever people like you in the world, Dr. Winter, who can think of ideas like this and actually put them into play as well. Where can I get more info on this? Is, is this uh, material uh, published publicly? Is there a research paper out? Is there maybe videos I can send people to? I mean, I, I think this is fascinating. I'd love to see how it actually works. Yes, so there are papers. Uh, if you go to uh, Google Scholar, for instance, and uh, search under my name, uh, I'm working with a team, by the way, so uh, it's not just supposedly clever me, um, but there are authors in recent papers that we've published on the use of treated water uh, in for informal settlements. Um, but if you look also on YouTube for the Water Hub, Franschuk, uh, you'll see quite a number of uh, videos that we put together that explain the process and the expansion of the project as well. Uh, just uh, in closing, just a final thought from you as I move away from the Water Hub, just on the infrastructure uh, issue we've been dealing with in the country. There's a big focus here on the show yesterday as well. Uh, how much of this uh, problem with infrastructure and the aging infrastructure, the failing infrastructure, whatever word you want to use, Doc, uh, could have been avoided with better planning. Because that's what I'm hearing from other experts. There was never going to be a problem if we just planned better. This wasn't unexpected. Uh, bad planning led to where we are now. You would agree or disagree? Yes, I think obviously planning and strategic planning and looking ahead is obviously vital. But the thing that I sometimes think we're missing is that we have got actually very good infrastructure in a lot of our, our places. Some of it is failing because there is are things broken in that infrastructure that need fixing. And what worries me is that I think we should be talking a lot more around the human resources that are allocated and to working with this very complex infrastructure that is delivering a very responsible service to the citizens uh, of, uh, of this country and its development. And I think that's where we need to be placing much greater emphasis so yeah. that we can ensure that the existing infrastructure is well managed. Mm. Uh, Dr. Kevin Winter, I certainly hope you and I uh, can have that discussion around the human resources in the not too distant future. Congratulations to you and your team. Incredible work. I mean, I would never have thought of something like that, but this is also why I'm not a water expert or a doctor. Uh, Dr. Kevin Winter, thank you very much. Water expert from UCT. I'm going to do that. If you want to take a look at that, I would just like to see the nuts and bolts of how it works. As the good doctor says, just go and Google uh, Waterhub Hub Hook, and I'm sure you can find a bunch of the videos and more content.